A little bit background of myself. Actually, I was a professional architect before 2009. And uh, you can see that in, from two, uh, 1998 to 2009, I have been realized the 500,000 square meters public buildings, schools, offices, I mean, all kind of a building. But later, I discovered the limitation of being an architect. Especially when I find that I design so many schools, but I cannot, as an architect, I cannot change the content, I can, or I can change a little the life of the kids. So that's the reason I think to become an educator, maybe it's more interesting. So since 2007, actually I devoted myself to become a design educator. Uh, a little bit of words about Tongji University. Tongji University is a university, is a design University in some way, I would say that in general speaking, design university, uh, which has a strong connection with the Bauhaus movement. And one of the founders of uh, Tongji Design or Architecture, uh, Professor Huang Zhuosheng, and he came back to Shanghai in 1940s. And he was a student of Walter Globes in Harvard University uh, in GSD. And in, in 1950s, so there's a slogan put into the lobby of uh, the school. It says that the new architecture or we can say design, is always evolutional. It evolves along with the era and it presents its development. It's not allowed to stand still and refuse to make progress. That's uh, Tongji's interpolation of design in 1950. You can see that way it's a big Chinese character. And uh, in reality, inside of Tongji University, we're keeping changing the program, I mean, every 10 or 20 years. But in 2009, there's a big change. And the university decided to separate the Department of Art and Design of Tongji University from the College of Architecture and Urban Planning. So after being together for 70 years, design became independent. And we not only separate the school, but we change the name from Art and Design to College of Design and Innovation. So this is a very strong statement. It means that from that year on, the school is mainly talking about design driver innovation. So basically, the, this diagram is uh, developed from the new definition of uh, Exodus uh, uh, industrial design in 2015. I, I draw a diagram to explain that. But in Tongji, in Shanghai, we try to apply this design driver innovation in two areas. One is uh, in science and technology. And for me, I think this is very important. In China, if you ask the kids, what's your dream when you grow up? I think that 80% of kids said, be a scientist. So there's a, it's obvious a kind of a high rank, the scientist, the engineer, and maybe design is here. I don't know if you agree. But another field, I mean, we think equally important is uh, social innovation. And the Intonji University, I put these two things together. It's also developed from the Chinese pattern of yin and yang, Chinese taiji. So we try to connect these two parts. So of course, I mean, after 10 years, the school is very good developed, and then the program has been expanded. We have all together nine programs, from physical design to uh, immaterial design, and even, I mean, we connect the design with entrepreneurship, and also ranking is very high, and we are now globally ranking 14. But the more important is the, the content. And we are in this uh, new era, and we especially think that what kind of design we should be Develop. We, we are trying to explore the new law of design, new mission of design, new scope of design, and a new approach of design. So, five years ago, 100% of the Tongji University uh, undergraduate students, at the first semester when they enter the university, 100% of them, they have to learn open source design and programming, open source hardware and programming. So basically now, all of the Tongji undergraduate students are good at the programming. But for us, this is not a skill. Now, this is a scenario when they start to learn. <laughs> and it's, it, 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 it's, it's not because it's a skill. And we think that it's, a, it's a beyond the technology. It's a mainly about the, a kind of a mindset. When we say that we're now we need to connect autumn, the world of autumns and the world of uh, bits together, it's not the future. It's today. If we still um, teach, as I was a student, I think that in some way, I mean, we, we need to rethink. 
And uh, we built a couple of laboratories in the school, and we built a fab lab in 2012, and Center for Digital Innovation, and uh, uh, Intelligent Big Data Visualization Lab, Design and Algorithm Lab, and the AI and the Data, uh, AI and Design Lab. Every year we release an AI and the Design Report together with Alibaba, which is a leading, now, I mean, leading uh, internet company or AI company in China. And uh, most important, this is lab. <laughs> Tongji is actually one of the first desis lab in the world, and uh, and and for me, I think this this lab, I mean, it really, I mean, connect so many things together. We will publish our own journal, the Journal of Design, Economics, and Innovation, and the short name Shi Ji is a Chinese term of design. Shi Ji means set up a strategy. Shi means set up. Ji means strategy. Ji also means calculating. Ji nowadays uh, computation. And we have our design week. Anyway, basically, this is about school, but the very important part of education is how to connect our education and the research to the main challenges and opportunities of China. And we look at all kinds of uh, uh, problems, or we say the problems, as a kind of uh, beginning of opportunity. Actually, I was deeply impressed when I was in India, I think three years ago. I attended India Innovation Exhibition, which is opened by uh, the president of India. I was really shocked because when, if I attend an innovation exhibition in China, for sure, 99% of the content will be high tech. But here, I'm very happy to see half of the exhibition, half of the content is about the countryside, is about the low tech innovation, how to connect the high tech and the low tech together. For me, this is our opportunity, it's not our problem. So I will introduce very briefly three projects, because uh, I think maybe you can also get more information from the internet. One project is Design Harvest project in 2007, started from 2007. And why I started this project? Because in 2006, China got the right to host the World Expo. And the World Expo, the theme is Better City, Better Life. And the Chinese version is City Makes Life Better. I was really disagree, but I cannot say against the Expo because it's a national, I mean, <laughs> it's a national event and Tongji University play a key role in World Expo planning and personally, I'm also the chief designer of the United Nations Pavilion in World Expo. Yeah. So, but so, so, so I started a project, uh, I mean, in some way secretly or I mean <laughs> myself, called Design Harvests. Basically, the idea is try to explore the potential of a rural area for China's sustainable development. If we say that half of the population of China is based on countryside, it's not our problem, it's our opportunity. So basically, design harvest is start from that. Of course, it's a long, long story. It's a 12 years project, so I don't want to explain too much. And the design challenge is how to use design to promote exchanges and interaction between urban and rural, including exchange of people, resource, knowledge, capital, job opportunity, and et cetera, et cetera. In some ways, it's a large interaction design in a larger sense, in a social sense. I started the project, I mean, <laughs> really, I mean, from nothing. This is a project without a client. When I was an architect, I always have a client, but this project is a project with a client. It's only we have a social goal. And there's an interesting thing that we get more and more people uh, for instance, uh, I mean, uh, the ideal Shanghai office, I mean, basically at the time, half of the ideal people in Shanghai, I mean, they work in my office on that project, and we test all kinds of uh, possibilities. These are all, I mean, real projects, and I'm very proud that there's a team behind it. It's become a real project, an entrepreneurship-driven project, and uh, we expect this project in St. in uh, Helsinki Design Museum, and in 2012, I published a book, uh, design harvests and acupuncture design approach towards sustainability. You can download this book from uh, internet. And this year, actually, uh, next month, we're going to launch Design Harvest 2.0. And Design Harvest 2.0 is mainly about how to crowdfunding and crowdsourcing a village, which is uh, indicate the possible future of uh, Shanghai rural area. And that area is that village is two square kilometers. So this is a big challenge, but we try to launch this project next, next month. The second project is uh, NICE 2035. So basically, it's a, 
The full name is Neighborhood of Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship. I started the project in 2015, and this is a typical image of uh, the, the, school, uh, the, the school gate in front of uh, my college. So you can see that we have an uh, Angry Birds Park. So we have lectures when the weather is good. So you can see that the kids, the students, I mean, come back from the supermarket uh, with some stuff, and he stop. So something interesting. He stop and listening. I'm not clear who is talking, but for me, this is exactly an image of a future school. Future school classroom is not like that. It's a clearly defined space, and even I mean, the teachers they will uh, will check who is who 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 is who who is here. At future school, I think that basically is that kind of, uh, I mean, moving scenario. I mean, this is another picture of uh, in front of my college. You can see that these are all community members. They are not the, the student of Tanji. But for me, I mean, they are even more important, in, at least the same important as our student. They will never get our degree, but I think that they are a very important part of our ecosystem. So we try to blur the boundary with, uh, 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 of the school and with the community. So in 2015, we started a 66 micro-design intervention and a co-creation project with the community. So in some way, I mean, within one month, I mean, we dramatically changed the atmosphere of the community we live in, the district we live in, and actually before that, it's a co-create, it's a really, it's a co we, we start, I mean, uh, one, to two months co-creation workshop with the community members. We decided what sh should be, uh, what, what kind of proposal should be accepted and uh, uh, who will be the people to take care of when it's built, et cetera, et cetera. And then the second step is that we move content in. So uh, we start to move the laboratory of the college into the community. So uh, for instance, this is one of the most famous one. It's a, it, before it was a waste recycling uh, center where the contract ended and uh, it's become a problem. And then we move in and we built a Tongji MIT City Science Lab. I, mean, I signed an agreement with Joy. Joy has now <laughs> resigned from uh, MIT Media Lab. But in any way, that this is a dramatic change, bring lives in. So step by step, we built a small but a connected community. Uh, the pink area is a school, but you can see that the school in the community and the community in the school, and the based on uh, offline and online. And then, I mean, in 2018, and then we start the flagship project, which we call uh, Living Line, nice to do city five Living Line. So we not only move our laboratory out to the street, to the community, but we also, I mean, try to make all of the laboratories think what will be the life in 2035? So which means that we work together to envision the future. So this is a very, it's a very typical low, in China we say low end. I mean, uh, the, the, the area where Tongji University is located in, I mean, uh, his, historically they say that it's a lower corner. Uh, the French concession in China, Shanghai, they call upper corner. Yeah. But uh, uh, we dramatically change, I mean, this uh, uh, image. So we built a food lab, a material lab, a fab lab, robotic lab, a play lab, a science lab, all kinds of labs inside of this, uh, this community. You can see the space does not belong to Tongji University. All the properties not belong to Tongji University. And the government never invests in nothing, and university invests nothing. But the people are inspired by the dream, and they decide to invest together and uh, make the change happen. And we even built, even, I mean, attract Austin Martin to build an uh, Austin Martin creative lab. This is the first Austin Martin Creative Lab outside of the UK. They decided to invest in this uh, concept. It's a, it's a beautiful space inside. It's renovated from an uh, uh, old building. But if you look above, you can see that it's a, it's a long, you can see laundry. Like this is a very typical, very, very typical Shanghai <laughs> ways of laundry. And, 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 and the whole street, in, in reality, is also a big laboratory because we put the monitors, we put, put the sensors, put cameras I mean, I mean in, on, on the street. So in this way, we can detect data and to help us to uh, improve uh, our uh, design intervention. So uh, the whole model of for the nice 2035 is that, and we do something interesting here. It's a prototype of a future life, a ways of living, and then we have a better interface with uh, uh, venture capitals, with industries, and then in, the, in this way, we transfer the innovation. And uh, because there's something interesting here, so we can attract the global, I mean, 
talents to uh, go to Shanghai to co-create with us. So in this sense, city and a community become a laboratory and a university become a cradle of innovation. And uh, for me, I think that, uh, of course, uh, from economy advice, I mean, new economy and society on future ways of living is a really exciting, I mean, uh, task for developing countries. And uh, the last project I'd like to introduce is uh, Beyond the Economy. It's about, I, I, sorry, I'm missing <laughs> the design, uh, design thinking. Yeah. So I, uh, it's, it's, it's about the, uh, uh, middle school education, K-12 education, the Tongji Huangpu School of Design and Innovation. Uh, this is a uh, design of finish center of Tongji University, collaborated with Auto University. You can see, I mean, universe, college life, full of fun. But this is a typical image of a Chinese high school student. My son is uh, now grade one high school, and his life is exactly like this. And he's in the best high school of Shanghai. He's so busy every day, work like that. But I cannot persuade him. But uh, as a father, I always think that, uh, I mean, everybody has their own choice. Why not we create a kind of alternative solution? There's more options. This is what a father can do. So, <laughs> so I try to create a new school. And that, that new school, I, I will not use that to replace the current model, but at least uh, there's a more option. So um, couple of, after a couple of years, planning in, 2000, in 2016, it's a, this is a very official moment. I signed the agreement with the Huangpu uh, Educational Bureau and decided to establish a new school, which is a design driven, design thinking driven. And uh, Huangpu District, this is the city of Shanghai, and the Huangpu District is so kind to offer a building to us. And that building was the mother school of uh, IMP, the most famous uh, Chinese American I mean, architect. Uh, he started here. But the more important uh, of the school is not the location, it's uh, pedagogical thinking. So before 100% of the teaching, education is subject-based. We have uh, mathematics, I mean history, geography, physics, whatever. And every teacher says that uh, their course, their subject is the most important. So they compete with each other, they never talk with each other. So in this particular school, we shrink the subject-based teaching to 60%. Then the student has 40% of time to learn based on project, based on problem. So it's a problem based. For instance, pollution. The Suzhou Creek is a very, before, 10 years ago, it's a, it's a super polluted creek. And the pollution, solve a pollution pro, uh, challenges. There's a knowledge of chemistry, knowledge of physics, and knowledge of history, knowledge of geography, knowledge of politics even. So we put this challenge, and then the, these two parts, 40% of problem-based learning and 60% of subject-based learning, they are integrated together. And we try to encourage students to use the knowledge across the context. So in this way, the students, they see the big challenge, rather they see the knowledge, concrete knowledge in their textbook. So we try to, these are the skills we hope the students can develop. And the, from the space of the school itself, it's also interesting. It's a part of the community because school is so small. So we share the space with the community and we also, vice versa, the community also share their space to us. For instance, we ex make our exhibition in the Lokbanda Museum, just the front door of Shanghai. You don't need to exhibit our work inside our school. Uh, this is a, the creative space of the school. And inside of the school, it's an open source hardware system and open source uh, software, hardware and software system. So students, they need to build a kind of a hydroponic system. I mean, they raise fish and the vegetable in, in this school. And then we don't need to teach them too much thoughts about sustainability. They know to grow fish, they grow, I mean, plants in artificial environments is super difficult. At artificial environments is a fragile system. They will understand that. That's a system. And then, I mean, the most exciting thing is uh, how the idea, step by step, become a reality. So, as a conclusion, I say that some needs were never needed. I mean, until, unless you create it. So, I mean, from the 
clearly wise and in 2014 during Tongji Design Week, and we announced a Design X Manifesto, it's called Complex Social Technology Technological System. Basically, these are the main features of this Design X, that which is a future design, an evidence-based design approach addressing better to the real-world challenges. It's about the complexity, ambiguity, uncertainty, focus on relationality and the system. Com it's about a complex system of stakeholders and issues. The so, last two, I think, is a very Chinese or a very emerging economy. The first is not only proposing solutions. As a designer, we should go beyond. But we also involve in implementing solutions and making progress by muddling through. And this is basically the uh, Chinese former leader, Mr. Deng Xiaoping's philosophy. I mean, start to do something and then, I mean, analyze the feedback and adjust your action. So basically, this is a step-by-step -step process. This is a motto for my college. I drafted uh, for the school in 2006, uh, 2013 when I was appointed as dean to learn and create for a meaningful life and a better world. Thank you very much.